and we're now heading south to County Clare to visit the folk park and castle of Bunratty. This is a reconstruction and a reassembly of a whole bunch of typical Irish country homes that have been rebuilt and clustered into the Bunratty Folk Park. It's very much like stepping back into the 19th century into a village that never actually existed, but here it is to fill out your world of imagination and show you what life was like during the last several hundred years in Ireland. And even today in some remote parts of Ireland you can find homes just like this. These furnishings are authentic from the 19th century and earlier. They have old farm machinery on display here. The homes have thatched roofs and whitewashed brick walls, plastered stone walls, all different styles of homey comfort and farm utility. It's a place where you can relax and have lunch also. And there's a castle we'll see in just a moment. It's just like being down on the farm. They've got some of the animals out walking about loose and you can see this antique farm reaping machinery for cutting the hay, bringing in the crops. Several homes represent the wealthier merchant class, while others are the more humble abode of the farmers and peasants who work the land. These ladies are baking goodies in the traditional way for the restaurant. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, could you tell me what you're doing? <laughs> I do a $60 million dollar question. <laughs> sometimes I know and sometimes I don't know. And we're at this moment we're making apple pie. Apple pie for the tea room. We bake everything in here. It's a bit untidy at the moment. Don't fill too much of it. We bake everything in here for the tea room. Um, scones, breads, brown scones, fruit scones, um, porter cakes, gingerbread, and apple pie. And everything goes over to the tea room. Ah, looks delicious. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> For example. That's we it. sample everything we need. We do. <laughs> a fine place for a spot of tea. A little pick-me-up. And the prices are quite reasonable here. You can also see the costume staff demonstrating other traditional folk activities. There's butter making and basket weaving. There's woodworking. You can have a peek into the old schoolhouse and see how these children were educated 100 years ago, 200 years ago. And there's a main street that's been recreated that runs right through the heart of the village. The reconstruction of Bunratty began about 30 years ago when Shannon Airport nearby was being expanded and several of these traditional homes were being demolished in the process rather than just simply destroy them, they decided to carry them over to this safe ground and rebuild them, and it formed a nucleus around which other structures grew up. On our trips, we always try and chat with the locals, including the kids. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name, Nicholas? Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. And where do you all live? The shop sell sodas for the kids and of course Guinness for the adults. Everywhere in Ireland you'll find Guinness on tap and these stores are functioning shops. You can purchase some takeaway goods, some tourist items and souvenirs here. You can get some items from the forge. They have weavings and lace and little typical souvenir items. And you can see how the peat is actually burned in the fireplaces of Ireland, even today. Peat is this ancient fossilized, carbonized soil that's turned to a pretty handy source of fuel. Goats get their energy out of the ground here also from this wonderful green grass. The most famous part of Bunratty is the castle, which is located right next door. This is a genuine medieval castle built in the 1460s, and it's open to the public. You're welcome to walk through it and see its typical furnishings that are hundreds of years old. This was a fortified castle that was used 
as part of the Norman conquest of Ireland back in the 15th century there were great battles that raged between the British and the Normans and the Irish the Celts the Anglo-Saxons constant warfare so there was need for dungeons and thick walls and turrets and cannons and constant battlements back and forth it was a turbulent history that wasn't resolved until early in this century during the War of Independence that began with the Easter Rebellion of 1916 and was finally resolved in 1919 with the foundation of the Irish Republic. Bunratty Castle has a fascinating history built by the McNamara clan back in the 15th century as a Norman stronghold to protect them from the peasants that they were conquering at the time and it was later taken over by the O'Brien family, thus two of the main families of Ireland up through the early 18th century when it was occupied by the father of William Penn, who founded Pennsylvania. In fact, the one legend holds that baby Penn was rescued from Oliver Cromwell's soldiers by being lowered out one of these turrets in a basket and thus survived and later grew to found the state of Pennsylvania. In the evening, this great hall is filled with music and laughter and food, for this is the site of a medieval banquet, which is one of the great events when you're traveling through Ireland, particularly if you're a carnivore and you like to chomp into some of this fine meats and potatoes and swig down some Guinness and just have a grand time and be entertained by the minstrel folk singers and dancers in their authentic costumes. But if you're like us and in the neighborhood earlier in the day, don't skip past Bunratty thinking it's only got a medieval banquet, for it offers the fascinating folk village that we've seen and this truly incredible castle, its original stone walls and staircases still intact. It's quite the experience. Ireland is filled with castles, You'll find others similar in style to Bunratty, the stone towers, many of them built during the early 15th century by the Normans. Nearby is the quaint picture postcard village of Adair. This often wins the annual ballot as the prettiest village in Ireland, and here you can see why they take great pride in their thatched roofs. Here the thatcher is busy working. You can see his raw materials spread out in the front yard. It's a dying art. There's very few people alive who can still put on a proper thatched roof, but they certainly do it for you here in Adair. And you can stop into the Tourist Information Center, which we did, and book your room for the evening. Even if it's not in the nearby town, the Irish tourist bureaus will take care of you any place you're going. The town has a charming old church. It's a neo-Gothic type typical country village church. Of course it's Catholic. This is a Catholic country. There's very few Protestant churches in Ireland, so we know for sure this is a Catholic church and the pointed arches tell you that it's a neo-Gothic construction. From here we're heading south to the Dingle Peninsula, which will take us most of the rest of the day driving, and we've stopped into this tourist information office We've got our bearings now, and we have bookings at a bed and breakfast on the north coast of the Dingle Peninsula. First, we'll stop in the town of Ennis for a bite of lunch. Unfortunately, we tried a pizzeria, which didn't work out too well. I think you're better off sticking with some Irish food. 